Hi, I'm Lucy Ellis, Senior Writer at Script, and I'm here at Bio Europe Spring in Barcelona, and I'm joined by Stefan Weber, CEO of Neuron, a company focused on CNS diseases and pain disorders, uh, with a licensed product on the market for Parkinson's disease. So thanks for joining us, Stefan. Thank you for taking me, Lucy. Uh, maybe we could start with um, what you're most excited about in your pipeline at the moment. I have to say that uh, right now, today, we are probably most excited about the Padufa date, which is indeed today, March 21, 2017. This is the day that we expect the US FDA to decide on market approval for our Sedago, a Parkinson therapy, uh, which is already approved in Europe, uh, European Union and in Switzerland, and is marketed by our partner, Zambon, in currently 11 countries. So by tonight, as we hope and uh, are confident to expect, uh, it will also be approved in the United States. Fantastic. And, and other than uh, that, then what else is in your pipeline? Well, excitingly enough, we have two more compounds which are in decisive development stages. And Cerezotan, uh, for patients with Rett syndrome, is currently in a pivotal study. And it, uh, given that this is an orphan indication, and we are targeting no more than 20 to 30,000 patients in the US and Europe combined, uh, the one study that we are going to do and currently running reporting by mid next year in 129 girls might take us to the next approval truck. Now differently from Sophilmite Sedago for Parkinson's disease, this drug in an off indication we would commercialize ourselves in Europe and the United States. Okay, so it's a different step for the company than it Absolutely, that could make Neuron a commercial business by end of 18, early 19. And do you have any other big clinical milestones coming up? Yes, so uh, what we will have besides or beyond today's Padufa date, obviously is the launch in the United States by our partner US World Meds. Then on Cerezotan, the orphan truck, we will see the completion of recruitment by November of this year. And then by mid next year, the readout from that pivotal study. And then we have a third compound, uh, which is called Evinomide and is the first add-on therapy in positive symptoms of schizophrenia. It's a completely new treatment paradigm, new mechanism of action, a new chemical entity, all the things that you would like to have. And that will start either by us ourselves or by a partner, a phase 2B in schizophrenia. And what are the biggest challenges in clinical development in CNS and particularly um, indications like schizophrenia and how do you manage this? I have to say that there are still too many indications in CNS uh, where we still do not understand what causes the disease and uh, how we could stop it or slow down the progression at least. So there's too many diseases like Alzheimer's Parkinson where we are just working on the symptoms. So that is from time to time frustrating, but what we see as a change over previous year, prior years is that more and more attention and money flows into CNS diseases. So on top of all the symptomatic improvements that we are generating, we should, in the next years, see something which also targets the causes of those diseases once we understand them. Okay. Brilliant. And you mentioned before then that um, your orphan products you'd look to uh, commercialize yourself, but what's your clinical strategy around those? Is it different to your other companies? No, I have to say different from a number of other companies. What we do when developing an orphan truck is we go by the absolute standards that the regulatory authorities require, FDA, the Canadian authorities, and EMA. And therefore, our uh, pivotal study with Cerezotan in Red Syndrome will be done double placebo controlled, 129 patients, six months treatment, and then a crossover from placebo patients to treatment. So we are doing it state of the art, and that means that once that one study should come out positive, we have an approval track without too much discussion of, uh, with health authorities afterwards. Um, why do you think that's so important to, to make that difference? I think the, some companies have taken uh, action in a way that they did just go for approval of a drug based on 10, 15, 20 patients. And we see all the discussion now with regulatory authorities, if a drug should be or could be approved based on such small number of patients, no placebo control. And we just don't want to take the risk of many years delay uh, to have to take an extra round afterwards. We just go for the standard from the beginning. So you're preempting those issues now? We are preempting them and we are uh, offering to our shareholders a fair chance. We, we ask for more money to do those studies, but we also have a much higher uh, probability of success within a reasonable uh, period of time. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, so you're here at Bio Europe, which is a partnering conference. So what's your strategy there? 
So, so Phenomite's Adago for Parkins, I have to say, is licensed. So for us, this is practically a done deal. Yeah. Uh, and so Reseton, uh, given what I explained before, we will not license, at least not for Europe and the United States, because we will commercialize it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about licensing it for other territories. Uh, and then we, for sure, will talk about licensing the schizophrenia asset. Again, new treatment paradigm, new mechanism of action, new uh, chemical entity. Even now, or after phase 2B, it's the right time for us to license it because we will never be able to commercialize it ourselves. Yeah. So what would a partner have to offer you and what stage would you look to like? Uh, schizophrenia is uh, an indication which requires lots, really huge load of uh, financial and human resources. Especially as you want a successful drug to be developed in a number of indications in parallel. So it would almost by definition have to be one of the large pharma companies that are still actively developing drugs in schizophrenia. Uh, and then we can define which kind of collaboration, which kind of commercial rights uh, are on the table and where we might have some rights staying with Neuron. And so you're in CNS space. Do you think there's been a renewed interest from investors in that area? Absolutely. Especially even though there's been quite large scale failures recently. Yes, there has been failures, but we also have seen some success stories. And keep in mind that Sadaro Safinomide is the first new chemical entity approved in Europe and the United States in a period of more than 10 years. Yeah. There has been no innovation. In schizophrenia, there has been no fundamental innovation in 30 years. So here we come, a, a small, still small, with 400 million market cap and uh, just two handful of people. Here we come, a small company targeting some real innovative steps. And that is where in, uh, investors more and more become interested again and understand that a lot of money has gone into cancer. And it is now time to focus again on CNS. And that is right now happening. Yeah. So what are your goals for the company this year and then looking further ahead, maybe in the next five years? So for this year, we want uh, to have the perfect solution, either do a phase to be ourselves or license the schizophrenia compound. And we want good progress on the recruitment of our pivotal study in Red Center. Five years, we want to be a commercial business with more than one compound in the market commercialized by ourselves. And obviously, we want to be one of those companies that have, have made it beyond a billion market cap. Yes. So big goals, and I hope you get there. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. It was Thank good to speak to you.